government shutdown continues. Many are voicing support for the president's offer to Democrats, which would help fix the situation at the border, as well as reopen the government. One America's Christopher Carter spoke with Trump Advisory Board member Steve Rogers. I'm joined here with Steve Rogers. He's a member of the Donald J. Trump Advisory Board. Thank you for joining well, One American here, News Chris. Network. Thank you. The government shut down. It rolls on with no end in sight. There's supposed to be a big meeting tomorrow. Tell me, what's going to happen? What can President Trump or these Republicans in the government do to get the Democrats to change their mind? One thing we need to make clear, Chris, is that the Democrats now own this. When the president made his speech last week, he offered things that were, I think, unimaginable to them. $800 million for drug detection equipment at points of entry, something they wanted. Another 800 plus million with regard to uh, the humanitarian crisis that is uh, developing down there on the border, something they wanted. He gave that to them. He talked about the 5.7 billion for the wall. And right before, right before, Chris, he went on television to tell us all what his proposal was, Nancy Pelosi said it's a non-starter. So that showed the American people that in the minds of Schumer, in the minds of Pelosi, and in the minds of the Democrats, it was a non-starter because they didn't want it to get started. Nancy Pelosi, we've seen some incidents surrounding her leadership now. Well, let's face it, the government hasn't really been open since she's been the Speaker of the House. So let's just start there. Also, the recent trip by House Democrats down to Puerto Rico, as well as the canceled trip. Is this woman tone deaf? How much is she to blame for this problem? Well, we should blame her for the entire problem right now. Uh, I'll tell you what, a good leader like our president stays home. They stay home and they work through a problem. They work through a process that's going to help the American people. And in this case, it would be the 800,000 workers out of work. <laughs> Keep in mind, the president doesn't like the idea that people are out of work. Despite what the left says, he wants to see those people back to work. But he also wants to see the American people protected. And Nancy Pelosi taking those trips and vacationing in and having a grand old time while these people are out of work, she owns the problem right now that we're facing at that border. So she's going to be facing the wrath, may I add, of not only, obviously, the Republicans across the country, but the Democrat conservatives who are now believing and they're now understanding where the president has been and where he's going with this. The State of the Union, we've heard different versions of how this will be delivered, and President Trump in his unique way will definitely reaffirm that. What do we think he's going to say when he gives his version of the State of the Union? What's the president going to say? Well, to begin with, Nancy Pelosi is terrified that the president of the United States would go before the Congress and before the entire world, let alone the nation, and explain to the American people how good, how good the state of the union is. It's good, Chris. Unemployment rate is very, very low across the country. Minorities are cheering the president for what he's done in their communities. The economy is booming despite some of the readjustments in the stock market. The respect to this country worldwide, I mean, I could go on and on and on. Talk to me now about these news stories we've recently seen. This is one involving BuzzFeed and the other one regarding the mainstream media and this young man who was wearing the Make America Great Again hat against the Native American on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial here. How has the fake news media gotten it so wrong again and again and again? The fake news media has an agenda and the agenda is not to report news. It's to hurt this president. With regard to the young uh, uh, students at the Lincoln Memorial, a lot of us got sucked in. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that when you look at the totality of the videos and circumstances, those young stu students did absolutely nothing wrong. Nothing wrong, Chris. It was that uh, a Native American who approached those students, and then what was not much reported were the black activists who were agitating everything. They were trying to create a violent confrontation there. So the mainstream media took this... Uh, this so-called fabricated story that they put together. And because they were wearing those caps, uh, they decided to make this into something that it was not. What about the BuzzFeed story? We saw wall-to-wall -wall coverage on CNN last week regarding them sourcing BuzzFeed. I've got to tell you, I'm doing some research. I've done a little research on those reporters, but there were some questions as to the credibility of some of the stories they put out uh, over the course of their career. Uh, the fact of the matter is, it turned out to be fake news. There is no cooperation, none at all. Even 
even to the point where Robert Mueller, who, by the way, says nothing with regard to his investigation, he had to come out and set the record straight. Shame on CNN. Shame on them. And, and the fact of the matter is, is that this is not the first time with CNN. This is so bad and so damaging to the country, what they're doing. They're feeding into a situation that's causing division. They're the station that 24-7 uh, alleges the president of the United States is a great divider. Sorry, he is trying to unite the country. They're the great dividers. Steve Rogers, thank you very much for joining One American News. My pleasure. Thank you very much.